Hello and welcome to the Nintendo News Network. Well, happy switch anniversary. The Nintendo Switch has officially been out for one whole year today, and man oh man has it been a hell of a year. People have been saying this is one of, if not the strongest year one in Nintendo's home console history. And with many channels, big or small, doing something to celebrate a year of playing amazing games at home or on the go, I felt that my celebration would be one of a history lesson. We are going to go back and look at all the year one game lineups for Nintendo home consoles. Nintendo has stated they see the Switch as a home console, and well, including handheld consoles would make this lengthy video even longer. But if it is something you're interested in, let me know, it might be a future video. Now before we dive in, I will not be going over every game released for each console in year one. My god, the Switch alone would take me forever. But I will cover the most notable games. So let's take a time traveling trip back to the mid 80s and see what helped welcome Nintendo's first home console. The Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short, came out with the game that started our love for plumbers. Yes, Super Mario Brothers. Year one of the NES also saw some amazing classics like Duck Hunt and Balloon Fight, which Nintendo loves to use randomly for mini games. We also saw the original Mario Brothers classic arcade game come out. And speaking of arcade classics, we got the Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong 3, and Donkey Kong Jr. This was very early in the world of video games. So Nintendo also made sports games, just titled after the sports, like tennis, golf, soccer, and so forth. With these instant classics and the many other third parties jumping into the NES, Year one of the original system looked pretty strong. Time to jump into the early 90s and welcome the Super Nintendo. I hope all the games don't have Super in front of it. The games leading the charge was Super Mario World. Taking what the other games did on the NES and adding a dinosaur, the game became a quick family favorite that is still beloved to this day. Along with Mario World, we got into the racing scene with F-Zero, a game beloved and ignored by Nintendo to this very day. Super Castlevania also stormed onto the system year one. We also got our first year one Zelda with The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Put on a pillar to this very day, this would not be the last Zelda game to be a year one release, but it is still one of the strongest in the franchise's history. Nintendo also put out a quirky game known as Mario Paint that was released in the first year. This game was a lot of fun, had a lot of creativity with it, and truth be told, was a bit ahead of its time. Many wondered how you could top Super Mario World as a launch title, and Nintendo responded with the Nintendo 64 and Super Mario 64. Bringing the 2D games into 3D was the name of the game, and Nintendo did just that. They nailed it the first time with Mario 64. And as we know, Nintendo loves branding, for better or worse. So 90% of the games had 64 in the title, because why not? Year 1 of the Nintendo 64 also brought Pilot Wing 64, Wave Race 64, Mario Kart 64, and Star Fox 64. See, I told you they like branding. Along with these very strong first party titles from Nintendo, Year 1 brought us two of the most popular fighting games of the time in the form of ports. Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Killer Instinct Gold. Nintendo sure was nice enough to provide the bloodlust for the kids. We then got the action third person game Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Although not in the current canon, this game expanded the story from Empire Strikes Back and brought a solid, still loved Star Wars game to the Nintendo 64. 2001 brought us the Nintendo GameCube. A system, once its life cycle was over, was called a failure and it might not have made the money many thought it should, the system and the first year was still very strong. It was the first home console to not give us a proper Mario game at launch, but it did provide Luigi with his first with Luigi's Mansion. And no, Mario's Missing does not count as a Luigi game, or really a game in general. Year one of the GameCube was shockingly strong, much more than I remember. We got two new IPs with Pikmin and Animal Crossing. The newest Mario Party with Mario Party 4 came out. We got a port of Sonic Adventure 2. And Team Star Fox came back for another year one release with Star Fox Adventures. You know, everyone loved that one, right? Okay, I really like the game and I might be the only one, but still. Super Mario Sunshine came out as well year one. 
It might not have been a launch title, but still, a Mario game early in the system is always welcome. We even got Metroid Prime Year One, technically. It came out November 17th, 2002, and the GameCube was released November 18th, 2001, so it still counts. Let's see, am I forgetting another game that came out year one of the GameCube? Oh yes, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Regarded to many as the best in the series, not something I fully agree with, but to each their own, it came out shortly after the GameCube released. It was almost a launch title. The first Smash was a great game, but this game really cemented it was a franchise that was big for Nintendo and important for them as well. Now it is time to talk about the Nintendo Wii. Yes, this system was sold out for the longest time, if you remember. Everyone had to get a Wii. Kids, adults, senior living facilities. And year one was strong with the best-selling video game of all time, Wii Sports. That is still very weird to say. But it was packaged with the system, meaning you got it, even if you didn't want it. Luckily, everyone wanted it. At launch, for people who wanted to do more than bowl, we got The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, a more realistic looking game than Link's Last Adventure in Wind Waker, which everyone hated at the time, myself not included. Wind Waker, since its first release, has always been one of my favorites in the franchise. The game was a huge hit, even though it was meant for the GameCube, but delays made it perfect to help cement a strong opening for the Wii. But it had much more. Year One brought us Pokemon Battle Revolution, allowing you to use Gen 4 Pokemon in 3D, Super Paper Mario, and even if you are not a fan, the still important Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. We even got Metroid Prime 3 Year One, ending the Phase On trilogy. Maybe. But to bookend the first year, and to cement the Wii as the great console it was, we got Super Mario Galaxy because eventually every franchise ends up in space. A bit more linear than the past two 3D Marios, this one is still a mini top 10 video game. And now we get to talk about the Wii U. Remember how I mentioned earlier that Nintendo loved branding, like the Super in front of all the Super Nintendo games and the 64 behind all the Nintendo 64 games? Well, they did that with the Wii U and it caused a lot of confusion in the marketplace. But I'm not here to talk about that. Was we used Year One any good? Well, at launch, we got the packaged game Nintendo Land. And I'll still defend that Nintendo Land was a great idea and had a lot of fun in it. And a few bland games, but that's how a party game goes. Along with launch, we got New Super Mario Bros. U. And after that, not much for the first year. Zombie U had a lot of good ideas, but nothing more. Game & Wario is grossly underrated and utilized the gamepad wonderfully. Pikmin 3 finally came out, and it was great. But as sad as it is, Pikmin is just not a system seller. The strongest outing for the Wii U Year 1 might just have been the HD port of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. But I would be remiss if I didn't include Miiverse, which was basically a game in itself with how great the postings were. But after all this research, I I would say this would be the weakest year one for a Nintendo home console, and it might have been a factor in how the Wii U performed overall. And now, we get to the Switch. I don't really have to go over the specifics as I have in the others, but we got Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, ARMS, Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey, and Zeta Blade Chronicles 2 all in year one. And this is not including some strong third party and indie titles. Stardew Valley, Shovel Knight, Treasure Trove, Celeste, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, Ports of Skyrim and Doom, two huge games made it to the Switch. The hits just kept coming out and it felt like rapid succession. So much so that for the first time in a long time, I have a backlog of games. Although the entire life is important to the console, Year One is what is looked at mostly. What did the system launch with? What strong games continued after launch? Did momentum continue into year two? I would say with the Switch, yes. Instead of teasing Mario and Xenoblade and we get them year two, they promised year one and they delivered. They have teased us with stuff for the future like Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon for the Switch, so we know that year one is not just a fluke, that they have learned from past mistakes. And I think the future for the Switch and Nintendo is very bright. Thank you for joining us here at the Nintendo News Network. 
This was a bit lengthy, but a lot of fun to research, and I hope you learned a few things. I know I did. But what are your thoughts on Switch Year One? What about the Year One of past consoles? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and like our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook pages. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to grind in Xenoblade Chronicle 2 to take down the final boss, so maybe I can tackle another game before Kirby Star Allies comes out. But I wouldn't bet on it.